Hi, my name is Anna and this is Spike. Welcome to Bulldog Bound 3E Elementary Exploration Event. Today we are going to participate in a workshop that highlights one of the programs you can study when you are a student at Ellen Hancock College. We are going to spend 20 minutes learning from one of our professors about what they teach and doing some cool activities. Remember that Bulldog Bound is a part of Hancock Promise program. If you graduate from one of the high schools within the Allen Hancock College Joint Community District, you will be eligible for your first year at AHC. Say it with me, first year free at AHC. All right, let's head off to our first workshop. Hello students, my name is Ron Lovell. I am the assistant professor and program coordinator for culinary arts and management at Allen Hancock College. Uh, and this is my third year doing Bulldog Bound. It's one of my favorite things. If you talk to some of your classmates, they'll tell you that you've come and you've made fresh pasta. Uh, you've had all kinds of great activities uh, on campus. We're gonna try and do the best we can by uh, allowing you to see what we do in the lab. Uh, and we're gonna videotape it so that you can, you can try this at home. Um, so I am part of the Culinary Arts and Management program. And uh, as part of this, this program, uh, we teach people how to manage restaurants and hotels. And uh, we teach you how to cook. We teach you how to bake. We teach you safety and sanitation, all those things that are important so that if you want, you can get a great job in the hospitality industry. Uh, if not, we will teach you how to make great food so that for the rest of your life, you don't have to eat bad food. And I love cooking at home. That's one of my biggest, biggest passions. When I make a, a, a plate of food and I bring it to somebody and I put it in front of them, I have made that with a lot of effort and care and every single recipe has a whole bunch of love in it. And when I put it in front of them, I get super excited to see them get excited because what we're gonna be making today, if I put it in front of you, I promise you would be very, very excited. So cooking is, can be dangerous. Uh, you have to know what you're doing. You're using um, a lot of hot surfaces. You're using knives and things like that. Um, so I wanna make sure that you get your parents' permission uh, first off uh, to, so that you're doing it safely. And if you have a, a relative at home that has a lot of cooking experience, ask them to help you. That's one of the greatest things you can do is learn from uh, a, another person how they do things. And last night I got to cook with my wife and it's so fun. We put on a little bit of music. Uh, we were talking, we were laughing, we were making mistakes. And um, yeah, it just works out really, really good. It's really, really fun. The, the commonality between human beings, we all eat and we all get to cook. And if you have a particular culture that is rich in, in food history, ask your grandmother or your mom or your aunt to, to show you their favorite recipe and ask if you can participate with them. It will change your life. You will have a, a bond with that person that uh, is centered around food and history and your family culture. So uh, I know a lot of you do that anyway, but um, I just wanna encourage you to keep this up. All right, so when I uh, received notice that we were gonna do a video, uh, I wanted to make something fun. Uh, usually we make fresh pasta because people usually don't know where it comes from. Um, but I wanted to make something today that uh, is fairly easy, something you can all make at home, and something that almost everybody loves. Uh, so when I decide what I want to make, uh, I have recipe books and I can open those up uh, or some of you use technology 
I do too, not as much as you probably, but uh, one of the things that I do is I look on the internet and uh, I try and find something that appeals to me. And today, I wanted something fun and something that I really like and I know my family likes. So today we're gonna to be making lemon cupcakes and we're gonna be making lemon curd. So I have an app on my phone and whenever you get information from the internet, you wanna make sure it's safe, you get your parents involved, but you also want to tell people where you got the information. So I have an app on my phone called All Recipes and I wanna give them credit because that's where I found this recipe. And this recipe um, came from an author, Fried Blue Tomato. That is their All Recipes name that they use. And so I wanna credit them and thank them for putting up this recipe. Now, I modify recipes very often and we're gonna do that today because I might like a little bit more vanilla than uh, the person who made this, um, but the basic recipe is from them. So I'll give them credit. So with that said, um, I'm gonna go back over here and talk about the steps uh, that we do when, when we start cooking. All right, so the first thing that we need to focus on when we're, we're going to be cooking is safety and sanitation. Um, now, to keep everybody safe, uh, when, I, when I came in here, um, I put on my mask, I wash my hands, and uh, I'm keeping a, a safe distance from anybody else who might be in, in the room. Now that I'm back here, I get to take my mask off. So um, you'll be able to see the rest of my face. I don't know if that's a good thing, but uh, it's a lot easier for me to talk without the mask on. So I wash my hands for 20 seconds. I scrubbed them really good and then I dried my hands with a single-use uh, towel. Um, I don't know if you guys have uh, a hand towel in your bathroom. How many people use that hand towel over and over and over again? You don't know if it's clean. So in my bathroom at home, I have single-use hand towels so that after we wash our hands, we can dry them with that single-use towel uh, and then uh, we, can, we can throw it away. That way it's a fresh towel for the next person. Uh, that's just one of the things that we think about when, when we start cooking. Um, another thing that we need to do, it, before we start cooking, we have to sanitize all of the surfaces because I've got a pot and pan drawer at home and um, you know, a shelf where I've got equipment and, and things like um, whisks and ladles and things. And they, they're clean, but they may not be sanitized. So one of the things that we do in uh, the hospitality industry and in this, this culinary lab is we use a, a sanitizer. And it is a food safe sanitizer and they use it in hospitals and restaurants and catering companies use it, uh, but we use it in the lab here also. And um, all of my students know how important it is to clean, all, clean and sanitize all of the surfaces. So uh, I'm gonna go right over here and show you how we make that. So we have these sanitizer buckets right here and inside here is water and quaternary uh, ammonium uh, product which is safe for food it's safe for your hands it's not going to burn you or anything but it kills any bacteria that might be present uh, on the surfaces uh, and so 
we mix this together and then we put a towel in here. And this allows us to wipe down surfaces uh, and we can even wipe down our hands uh, with, this, with this solution. Um, and I've already wiped down all of these surfaces and all of these pieces of equipment, but I can also, since I touched my phone, I don't know if you remember, um, but I can wipe off uh, my hands and that's going to kill any residual uh, bacteria or anything that we don't want. And then I always make sure I clean the surfaces of you know where I, wherever I'm going to be cooking. And like I said, I already sanitized everything, uh, so, so we're all good. How do I know that this sanitizer is effective? Well, I'm glad you asked. We have test strips that we use in the, in the business. And these test strips start off as just clear, but then we dip them into the sanitizer and it's got a test strip and it changes color to show me that the sanitizer is at the correct uh, uh, dilution and, and that allows us to be confident that it is the correct sanitizer and it's going to do what we want it to do, which is kill bacteria and viruses. So that's my sanitizer. Now that I've got everything all clean, uh, I can uh, practice mise en place. That is a very, very fancy French word uh, that means everything in its place. So I got the recipe and with a recipe you need ingredients and you, you also need the equipment to to put that recipe together and start cooking. So one of the things I like to do is read through the entire recipe first, make sure I have everything that I need that's on that list, and then I assemble it all together. And that makes cooking so much more fun because I don't have to run back and forth and back and forth to the fridge or to the pantry or to where my equipment is uh, to get everything. Uh, I like staying kind of in, in one place if I'm going to be, be cooking. And getting all of your tools and your ingredients together is called mise en place. Uh, and that's a French term. Um, and it just means everything in its place. So uh, if you watch cooking shows, you'll see Bobby Flay or uh, Gordon Ramsay, all these guys, they'll, they'll uh, put all of their ingredients together on the table right in front of them. And um, I tried to do that here. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. So we're gonna be making <coughs> today uh, perfect lemon curd. And lemon curd uh, is kind of what it says. It, it's, it's lemon, but it also has some egg in it. And then you cook that together. Uh, and the acidity makes it kind of uh, gel together. Uh, and then you add sugar to it just to make it sweet. And it's fantastic. Oh, and you need a little bit of fat in there too. So we use butter. So I got the recipes. And this recipe was from Tawny44, from All Recipes, and it says perfect lemon curd. And there's all kinds of reviews on there to say how good it is. Uh, and so I wrote it up here for us. We're going to use three quarters of a cup of fresh lemon juice. So already I know I'm going to need some lemons. Uh, and so I bought some lemons and then I washed them and I'm going to need one tablespoon of grated lemon zest. And so I know I'm going to need a lemon and I'm going to need a tool. I'm going to need a zester. And that's what this is. Uh, sorry, going back over to the lemon juice, I'm going to need something to squeeze out the juice from the lemons. So I got a lemon juicer and I have a cutting board and a knife because I got to cut those lemons in half. Uh, I'm going to need three quarters of a cup of sugar right here. And in order to measure that out, I got to have a measuring tool. So I got that. I need three large eggs. So I have my three large eggs all ready to go. 
and a half a cup of unsalted butter. Uh, when you're baking, uh, try and always get unsalted butter because you don't know how much salt is in there. So if you look on the side of these little sticks of butter, it'll tell you if you cut it here, it's one tablespoon. If you cut it here, it's a quarter cup. And then this is a half cup. Uh, so you do need to know a little bit of math when you start cooking also, because if I ask you, well, how many tablespoons is in an ounce? Or how many ounces is in a pound? How many quarts in a gallon? How many ounces in a gallon? How much does a gallon weigh? All of these things are factors that you need to know and you need to know some basic math. I have little cheat sheets for my students, which is great, but it's faster if you know it right off the top of your head. <clears throat> so that's the lemon curd recipe right there. And then <clears throat> we're also going to be making lemon cupcakes uh, because I love lemon and I love cupcakes. And I hope you do too. So <clears throat> fried blue tomato, put this recipe uh, up on all recipes. And it's lemon cupcakes. So I need three cups of self-rising flour. I have that right here. I need a half a teaspoon of salt. I don't need this much salt, but I do need to be able to measure it. So I've got my measuring spoons. I need a cup of unsalted butter. And remember I told you that stick was a half a cup. So um, if I need a whole cup, two of them. I'm going to need two cups of white sugar. I have that right here. And I have uh, the measuring cup right here for the sugar. Four large eggs, I got it right over there. A teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now, vanilla extract, uh, lots of times, it is uh, artificial vanilla. Uh, I think I have some artificial vanilla over here. But I wanted these to come out really good, so I use real vanilla extract. It's real expensive, so don't spill it um, and don't waste it. Uh, but it is really, really delicious. Uh, two tablespoons of lemon zest, cup of whole milk, uh, I've got milk right here, and two and a half tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. You also need to know what these little abbreviations are. When you see TSP, that's teaspoon. When you see TBSP, tablespoon. So as, as you cook more and more, you get to know what all of these terms are. So then I know I need uh, all of these uh, mixing bowls. Uh, I'm going to need uh, some tools. So I look at this and I read the whole recipe so that uh, I know ahead of time what I'm going to need to put it together. And one of the best things about experience is the more often you do it, the better you get at it and the fewer mistakes you make. I make a lot of mistakes. I burn stuff. Um, I undercook stuff. Uh, one of my favorite shows I watch with my wife is uh, The Great British Baking Show. Um, and it's fantastic because you get to see um, uh, a lot of people doing their very best and trying to make amazing food uh, to just wow the judges. And the judges are really tough. They're polite because, well, they're British but also they don't want to hurt people's feelings. It's okay to tell people uh, that their cake is too dry because if you don't tell them, they're not going to get better next time. And so you, if somebody does give you uh, some constructive criticism, they're not just being mean, it helps because then the next time you make it, you're going to make your cake a, a little bit moister and it's going to come out better and that's how we get better. If you have a coach, a coach has to be able to tell you when you do something wrong and it's okay. Um, teachers, we grade stuff all the time and I need to feel comfortable telling people, um, ooh, the flavor's a little bit off, maybe you burned it, maybe it got scorched, something like that. And then the student will say, well, okay, um, this is how, how I did it, how could I do it better? And then I look at it and using my experience, um, I can help them and, and that way they get better. And then when they get a job, uh, they're gonna make it right the first time. So 
A lot of the equipment that I'm going to use today uh, is professional cooking equipment. You don't have to have all this stuff in order to make cupcakes. Really, just a bowl and, and an oven and you know a, a little baking tin. Uh, you can do it, do it without all this equipment, but we're teaching people how to have a career in uh, the, the cooking business. And if you are uh, a restaurant manager, which I was a restaurant manager for many, many years, you also need to know how to cook. And I cooked for Marie Callender's for 10 years, and I was a baker, and, and I got to make fantastic stuff. I got to work one day, and they said, Hey, Ron, um, I know you're, you're working three to midnight, but we also need you to make 300 lemon meringue pies for Costco in addition to your regular job. That's a lot of pies. And so I got to work right away, and it was super fun. Um, but the equipment that we're going to be using today, we have an induction stove, uh, which is it's some sort of magic. I don't know. Uh, you have to take a physics class to understand. Uh, but when I turn this on, I can change the, 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 the temperature. This surface doesn't get hot until you put a, a proper pan on there. When I put the pan on here, the light stops blinking and I know it's gonna make this pan hot. So I'm using, um, I think it's magnetism or something like that. You're gonna have to talk to the, uh, the, the physics uh, group for the Bulldog Bound and, and they'll teach you how this works. We're also gonna be using a KitchenAid mixer, which is fantastic. Uh, if you love to bake, ask for one for Christmas or your birthday. And if you have one, you're going to be able to, to make some amazing things. Uh, and like I said, I got it all sanitized. Uh, we use these KitchenAid mixers in the restaurant business, and uh, we use these mixers in our culinary classes too. And I have the appropriate uh, blade on here. Make sure everything works. And then we are just about ready to begin cooking. Everything sanitized. I got all my ingredients. I got all my equipment. Uh, I'm in a good mood. Uh, I don't have any music on because I want you to be able to hear me. I got my friends with me. So they're going to watch and they're going to help me. And then they're going to help me to eat what we make today. So get your parents or your whoever uh, takes care of you. Get your brothers, your sisters, your aunt, uncle, grandma and get cooking and uh, I'm going to do that right now and I'll show you the, the, the steps as much as I can with the time that we have. All right, so the first thing I'm going to make is the, the lemon curd and you can't get juice out of lemons without uh, cutting them in half and we need the lemon zest. So I'm going to grab my juicer, my zester, my lemons, um, and I've got some containers that I'm going to be putting it in. And then I'm going to go over to my equipment table and I'm going to get going. So this is the dangerous part because I do have to cut these lemons. So this is a chef's knife. Um, and I never pick up a knife unless I'm actually using it. I don't uh, walk around with it. I don't use it to point at things because if somebody walks behind me, what happens when I do that? Oh, it's over there. I could, I could hurt somebody and I could hurt myself. Uh, fortunately, I have not required stitches from my 35 year career in uh, the cooking business. That's because I respect the knife, I make sure it's sharp, um, and I hold it the right way. So uh, in our program we give a knife set, a full set of knives to every student that they get to use for the semester because the knives are expensive and some people uh, they struggle to pay rent and all of that and I don't want them to struggle. I want them to to enjoy cooking and I want them to have the right equipment. So. 
Uh, this is a chef's knife. When I use this knife, I grab my finger and my thumb and I put it right there and then I put these fingers around the handle right here. And then I'm ready to cut. So um, first I have my lemons and when I'm juicing my lemons, I'm gonna cut them in half, but I'm gonna need to zest these lemons first. So I take the lemon and I take my zester and I start scraping them. And I'm getting the peeling off of the lemons and that creates immediately a wonderful smell because there's oil in the skin of a lemon and a lot of flavor. But if you eat a lemon peel, it doesn't taste so good. That's why we add sugar. So I get lots of this lemon zest and then after I've whoa, almost lost my lemon there. <laughs> after I uh, get all of the peel off of this particular lemon, then I'm, a, I'm not going to waste it. I'm also going to need the juice out of the lemon. So this one's just about giving up a lot of its peel or its zest and then I can set this aside, grab my knife the right way and cut right through it. And then I have a lemon juicer and this has a little screen on it so it's going to screen out a lot of the, uh, the seeds and the pulp. That one's done. And you can see as I go through this, the juice just starts going right down into the bottom and then I'll have uh, some nice juice to make um, our cupcakes and to make our lemon curd. So that's how you get the juice. That's how you get the zest. Then I have sugar, three large eggs, and a half a cup of unsalted butter. This recipe says go ahead and take all of the ingredients and get them all into the, the pan at the same time. So the butter, it says it needs to be quartered or cubed. So um, I'm going to unwrap the butter. And it wants room temperature butter. So I get it out of this package and then I'm gonna cut the butter with the knife. And if you're wondering why they want you to do it that way, it's because it melts faster. So I'm gonna cube this up like they tell me to. And then it gets to go in here gets to go in here and I measure out my lemon zest, uh, one tablespoon of lemon zest. This all gets in here and it needs three quarters of a cup of fresh lemon juice. Uh, I didn't make three quarters of a cup yet, but I do have the lemon juice here. And I would add this in here also, um, measure it out to three quarters of a cup, but that goes in there too. And then uh, I'm going to need three quarters of a cup of sugar. Then the sugar goes in also. And three large eggs. Now when I, when I crack eggs, I don't know if you've cracked eggs at home, um, but it's one of those basic things that almost everybody needs to do. I'm gonna grab my sanitizer real quick. Because I do have some butter on my hands. <clears throat> so when you crack eggs, if I just crack these eggs right into this pot, what happens if a shell gets in there? It's then it's really hard to get it out. Uh, so when I crack eggs, I like to 
crack them in a different container. Now see, this one, I got shell all in there, but I can see that I made a mistake and I got some shells in there, so I'm going to take them out before I put them into my recipe. So there's one egg with no shells. And then I can do that with these other eggs also. Hey, I did that one right. I'm getting better. No shells. I did that one right too. No shells. I'm so proud of myself. And so this goes in here. And then it says take a whisk, get it on medium heat, and you're going to cook it until it starts um, showing a little pattern. So it's going to start thickening up in here. And I'm going to turn this to the temperature of 5 which is medium on this uh, particular um, induction stove, and then I whip it up. Um, get everything all, the, the butter melted, get the sugar and everything incorporated, and, and then heat it up, keep moving it around until you start seeing the pattern from the whisk. That, uh, so that means it's starting to get thick. It also says in the recipe that I read uh, as soon as it forms bubbles on the top and the bubbles stay, then you're probably, probably pretty close to getting ready. One other thing that you've probably seen people do, uh, I've seen Bobby Flay do this. They, they're cooking and they want to see if it tastes okay and they take their finger and they stick it in there and then they stick it in their mouth. You don't want to get your germs into the food that you're making. so. Bobby Flay, don't do that. And never, ever hang the towel on your apron either. That's another thing that they do that uh, isn't very safe or sanitary. So anyway, this would, would melt down and uh, I already made a little bit. So I'm gonna grab it for you and show you what it looks like. All right. So this is a lemon zest or a lemon curd that I already made. Uh, I made this last night with my wife. Um, and so as you heat it up, it's going to start to, to get thick and it's going to get all incorporated together. And there I've got my lemon curd. If you want to taste it, that's okay. And I, we recommend that to make sure it tastes right, but get a clean spoon and then taste it, uh, and then put the, the spoon in um, your dirty dishes pile so that uh, you're not using a dirty spoon again if you need to taste it again. Get a clean spoon to taste it the second time. So anyway, there's lemon curd. Give it a shot. Um, there's instructions also on the recipe that are gonna help you, and uh, hopefully yours is gonna taste as good as mine. All right, so we did this. And check it off, check it off, check it off. Boom, boom, boom. It's done. It tastes delicious. Now we get to move on to our cupcakes. So the lemon cupcakes require the three cups of self-rising flour. And I just happened to do that already. So I've got my three cups of self-rising flour. I need a half a teaspoon of salt, and I measured that out first too. That's mise en place. And then this goes in to the flour according to the, the recipe directions. Um, and then uh, you mix this all together, just the salt and the flour. And then it says take a cup of unsalted butter, two cups of white sugar, and get those into uh, a mixer. Now you can do that with a whip if you don't have a, a KitchenAid at home, um, but if you do have a KitchenAid, it makes life a lot easier. So I'll just show you kind of how the KitchenAid works. Um, again, we're going to uh, cut up this butter a little bit so that it, 
it mixes easier. If I just put this whole thing in there, uh, it may not work very, very well. So I'm going to cut this butter up. And then it's ready to go into my KitchenAid. One of the exciting things that's happening right now, I can kind of hear it going on. Um, on the other side of this wall of my, my culinary kitchen, um, they are in the middle of construction on a new fine arts building and it's going to be huge and they're building it just for you. So as you're thinking about uh, where to go to college, I hope you think about Allen Hancock College and if you are in the fine arts department, you're going to have a brand new facility that's going to be ready for you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, back to this. I've got uh, my butter in there and I'm going to put my sugar. And on the instructions, it says um, whip until it's kind of fluffy. So uh, the, the KitchenAid, uh, everybody goes through training on how to do the, use this piece of equipment safely because this is a very powerful mixer and it could hurt you if you use it in the wrong way. Um, but I have this assembled properly. The bowl is all secured and I'm going to start off slow. So I'm going to put it at one and see that my sugar and my butter is starting to mix together. And then a little bit faster. Everything's looking good. Oh, perfect. And then I'm going to get all the way. That looks like it's doing what it's supposed to do right now. Another thing, uh, when you're using the KitchenAid mixer and it starts going, you're going to need a spatula to kind of get uh, everything down back into where the blade can, can hit it and keep it mixing. And it's looking great. The, the, the sugar is, is getting together with the butter um, and then it's uh, going to start whipping and, and it, it's warming up the butter and it is mixing it to a consistency that's going to be just perfect. While this is going, uh, I'm looking at what comes next and uh, we're going to be uh, introducing the flour and the salt back in. So I grab my flour and my salt mixture. And the ingredients in the instructions uh, tell you to add uh, lemon zest and the vanilla extract um, to this mixture before you put the flour in. So this is looking really good. I'll go ahead and turn this off um, and grab my vanilla extract and my measuring spoon and it's a full teaspoon of vanilla extract and if I only have a quarter teaspoon in my mind I know I'm gonna have to use four quarters and uh, again you can you can put it directly in but what if I pour too much what if it overflows and and then I get too much vanilla in there then my recipe is not correct so I'm going to use a little cup. Two, three, four. And then I get to put it in there. And then the lemon zest. I've got some more over here that I already did. And I have two tablespoons of lemon zest, add that to it, and then I'm going to turn it back on and get those mixing. 
All right. We're looking good so far. And then the, you're looking at the recipe, what comes next, and it says add the flour and the, the milk and the lemon juice in stages. You don't want to just dump it all in there. So um, I'm going to get my milk ready to go. And it is a whole cup of milk, which just happens to be eight ounces. And let me go get my, um, I need two and a half tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. And I have that already also. All right. So I'm going to put some of my lemon juice in there. And then it says add the flour slowly. Okay, and then it says add some of the milk. And then add more flour. More milk. And then more flour. All right. It's looking great. It also says don't over whip it. I think it looks great. I think it's going to be just perfect. All right. Um, before I attempt to remove the, the beater from the KitchenAid, uh, I'm going to lower the bowl. And another thing that I like to do uh, when I'm using a KitchenAid and I'm going to have my hands in there is I unplug it. That way I know I'm not going to get my hand caught in the mixer, which is a goal of mine. Do not get hurt. And then I use my spatula to get the extra batter off. Should you eat this batter? I used to lick the, 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 the beaters when my mom was cooking and um, there's raw egg in here and so it's not a good idea to lick the batter off of the beaters because raw eggs can have some bacteria in there. Okay, now I'm ready to, to get my batter into the baking tin. And I have baking cups right here. These are just these little paper things that allow you to keep your pan clean and then you can pop your cupcakes out and then you can share them with your friends. So I mentioned that I make mistakes and I oftentimes I miss things that are on the, the list uh, of equipment or ingredients and if that happens um, I don't get too mad. I just learn from it and I do better the next time. And this time I forgot one little piece of equipment that I love to have when I'm making cupcakes or something that I want or cookies. If I want it to be very consistent, I need a scooper and I don't have my scooper. That's okay. I'm going to go grab it. All right. I've got my scooper now um, and I'm going to take my batter. Remove the bowl and I'm going to scoop the same amount of batter into each of my little baking cups for my cupcakes. That way all the cupcakes come out the same size and you don't hear people saying, well how come their cupcake is bigger than mine? But it also 
helps you on your cooking time. Because if you have different amounts in your baking cups, one of them may take longer to cook than the other one. And that's not going to work right. All right. I'm going to get all of those in there, all portioned correctly. Set this aside. And now I'm going to do something a little bit different. When I showed my wife this recipe, her name's Stacy, by the way, <clears throat> and she teaches fifth and sixth grade, so her class is going to see this. So if you are in Mrs. Lovell's class, hello, here's a little shout out to you. But last night, Mrs. Lovell said, well, I like blueberries with my lemon cupcakes. And I said, hmm, okay. I want her to be happy. So I went and I got some frozen blueberries. And so I'm going to take these blueberries and I'm going to put four of them in each corner for half of the blueberries. But what if you don't like blueberries? I want to make you happy too. So I'm going to do some without blueberries. And all the time I'm doing this, I'm thinking about the people that are going to be enjoying these. And these particular cupcakes, I'm going to give them to my friend Kevin, who works for Allen Hancock College. And Maggie, she works for Allen Hancock College. And they're going to take them back to the office so that they can eat them and they can share them with their friends. So I'm really excited about that. So each of these cupcakes has a lot of ingredients in it, but it also has a lot of love because at Hancock College, everybody works together to help the students. And we take a lot of pride in what we do. And okay, I'm ready to go in the oven. There are my raw lemon cupcakes and then these special ones with blueberries on them. So I put them in the oven and the oven says it, it's supposed to be 375 degrees. I have commercial ovens here. So our ovens uh, are convection ovens. That just means it blows hot air. It circulates the air in the oven so everything cooks uh, at, a, at a, the same time. You probably saw your mom or your grandma or somebody uh, <clears throat> having to open up the oven and flip the pan around. That's because the air is not circulating. Um, so convection ovens are really, really nice. And I have that over here. <clears throat> In the recipe it says cook for 17 minutes. I always keep an eye on it because I've burned lots of stuff in my life. And you cook it for 17 minutes, but you're going to check it out about 10 minutes, and then you're going to check it out 15 minutes, and it says when you think it's done, poke a toothpick in it and pull the toothpick out, and if there's no raw batter on the toothpick, then it's good to go. So, <clears throat> I already cooked some. It's a little secret that they do in cooking shows. So. These are all finished. Um, I grabbed my hot pad and these aren't hot, so it's not burning my hands. But I wanted to show you what they look like when they're finished. I'll come around over here. And here's our six blueberry lemon cupcakes and then our six regular lemon cupcakes. And now, what I can do is I can add the lemon curd inside for a really neat surprise. Uh, I can um, put icing on them, which uh, I made some icing also. There's, there's glaze, there's icing, and then there's frosting. And those are all different recipes that you get to use. Uh, if you have had a glazed donut, you see it's just a real fine coating of sugar on there. Uh, if something has a... Um, uh, an icing, it's a little bit thicker, and then if you have a frosting, you can color it whatever colors. And you've seen, you know, frosting on cakes and things like that. Um, but I already made some of that, and I'm going to go ahead and just show you real quick how
you can get some icing on these. Just take this cupcake that's cooled down and there you go. And now we have a little bit of added sweetness and I can put little sprinkles on here or whatever you like uh, and then I'm going to give them to my friends. So anyway, that is lemon cupcakes, lemon curd. I hope you liked it. I hope you uh, get to make some of these recipes and modify them. Learn how to cook, share with your friends, and always remember to add a bunch of love in there and think about where you're going to be going to college. I hope you come to Hancock College, and if I'm still here, come and say hi to me. There you go. Thank you for participating. We hope you enjoyed the workshop. Remember, first year free at AAC. Go Bulldogs! Uh -huh.